The following is a transcript of a conversation between Matthias de Stefano, referred to as me, and his higher self, referred to as I am. 21st February 2021, Neptune. Me. My eyes get wet. I close my eyes as if holding the pressure of heaven above my head. And when I close them, I observe the pressure inside my head, my ideas, my thoughts, what I stay with only when I close my eyes with myself. How many really close their eyes to see? How many do it just to sleep? I am. Closing your eyes can be deadly for the body, and in turn it is its ultimate liberation. The body is designed to survive a hostile space that forces it to adapt or perish. Closing one's eyes is a moment of weakness, vulnerability, in which the physical being is naked in the face of external dangers. He can't see what's coming. He can't be vigilant about where to run or what to defend himself from. This cellular memory of the times when humans, like all animals, were easy prey for other creatures, has made the thought of closing one's eyes for no specific reason a waste of time, a uselessness, and even a danger. And yet, if you don't close them, you can go crazy and die. The same body designed to be alert loses its ability to be alert if it does not sleep. A human needs to sleep an average of eight hours a day, time in which all the cells of the body take advantage to regenerate, absorb nutrients, relax, order data collected in the day, process information, restore the vitality spent during the daytime period. Without sleep, cells have no regeneration time and they simply die, wearing down neurons, the heart, the digestive system, and producing a chain reaction that can lead to migraines, fainting, even heart attacks and death, the eternal sleep. Me. How long can a person live without sleep, without closing his eyes and resting? I am. It will depend on the person, but a few weeks or months without having first gone through the worst states. Sleep is fundamental for life, regulates metabolism, facilitates homeostasis. That is, it keeps the body in order. But as I said, it's a moment of absolute weakness if you consider yourself a prey. Some animals achieved something incredible, sleeping with half the brain. In this way, they can remain attentive with the other half and at the same time rest. Humans usually have constant moments of microsleeps because complete insomnia is impossible and certain parts of the brain are turned off from time to time, generating lapses, blank moments where you lose track of what is happening. Me. Like those moments when you look at a point and someone catches your attention and you say, oops, what happened? I am. That's right. It's the body knowing that it needs an instant to regenerate or order information. And for this, it must concentrate inside, turning off all external nervous alertness. The body never really rests, but is divided into two tasks. During the day, it puts everything to be alert and active. And during the night, it puts everything to be centered on itself. Me. Biologically, this has a clear utility. To have energy and be attentive, you need to rest and recharge. And psychologically? I am. In sleep, the brain sorts all the data processed during the day and stores it as useful information for the following days. This saves time on reactions. Everything it captures is assimilated to be used in similar circumstances. This storage activity is what you call dreams. You see the images, emotions, situations, ideas, all mixed, because the brain is trying to make a selection of the most useful. This is where something unique and impressive occurs. The dream generates abstractism. Me. Like Salvador Dali's paintings, surrealist abstractism, melting clocks, elephants with long legs like bamboo, things that go beyond the structured and that are above reality. I am. And this allows an interpretation of the world completely different from the concrete one that the eyes see. The question would be, if the brain is active working at 100% in the case of wakefulness and drowsiness, and its task is to gather constant data for survival and transcendence, then what differentiates the real from the unreal? What does it say that what the brain perceives when awake is reality, and what does it say that what the brain itself perceives when sleeping is a lie? Don't you think that if the brain were deceiving us in our inner world, it could do exactly the same thing when it shows us the outer world? 
Me. Oof. You just destroyed reality again. Or at least any point of reference I might have. But it is true, it does not exist, or on the contrary, everything exists. That is either the external thing I perceive as a brain illusion, or what I perceive in my dreams is as real as what I see during the day. I am. Exactly. Another of the beautiful paradoxes. But one thing is certain. It is easier to control the external than the internal. And although there are hundreds of dangers in the internal world, none is as deadly as those that confront me externally, for all can lead me to death. Dreaming of a monster only shows me the monsters that lie in me, but that an external monster comes, such as a war, a beast, a murderer, can end all dreams and nightmares. There is no escape. This causes people to downplay the internal world as it is not practical for life. Me. Logical, what we dream, is never practical. I am. However, there is only one thing that is able to interact between the external and the internal. There is a single reality that can go from a dream to the waking world and determine what you do in the real world, being the same tool that produced in the external world can determine what you dream in the dreamlike unreality. Me. What is it? I am. Emotion. Me. Sure, what we feel. I am. A dream can awaken in you an emotion that is capable of invading your day and your routine. And in the same way, something that you feel in your day-to-day can determine the order of your inner world. The emotion is what unites the two eyes, the internal and the external. The two visions of your being, your two realities, are united by what you feel which after all is the only thing that truly exists because emotional sensations are the language in which the electrical pulses of the nervous system are translated. Me. We are a sea of emotions in both worlds, internal and external. I am. And that is why they regulate everything you are, think, do, feel, say, perceive, everything, absolutely everything to a lesser or greater extent from the philosophical, psychological, biological, everything. The subconscious is the ocean where the reality you believe in occurs. Me. Neptune, I am. Do you see? The god of the seas. Its Roman name is a readaption of the ancient Greek sea god Poseidon. Neptune is an Etruscan word from the languages of the Middle East, specifically from the Iranian areas and the Great Stan, where water is said nepa and wet is said nepita. Thus, one related to water would be said in Italic languages as nepitunus. Water is the basis of life, the foundation of a civilization, the pillar of existence. Thus, the seas were the origin of life, and therefore it is the god who contained the birth of Venus Aphrodite, who generated beauty in the evolution arising from the oceans. Water is the pulse and rhythm of the times. Its floods mark the cycles of time, agriculture. The drought marks the end of production and the beginning of migrations. For millions of years, the human body was receiving information in order to look for water, manage food that arises thanks to it. Blood was interpreted as water or internal ocean. Water is one, and therefore, internal water unites us all. Thus, families were interpreted as groups of blood. Me. The family is carried in the blood. When in fact it is not so, because the genetic codes are in the cells, in the nucleus, inside the chromosomes, not in the blood. I am. Although some elements in it, such as white blood cells, do carry this information, But beyond that, it was the one that, related to water, speaks of transformation, of what unites us. And not knowing the cells, they understood that the power that unites us inside us is in the blood. Pulse and blood pressure allow nutrients to vitalize the body, regenerate cells, make them sensitive to the absorption of information. Thus, the nervous system is more active and cognition improves. Staying hydrated speeds up the general functioning of the body because lack of water, dehydration, shuts down all functions. There is no longer good connectivity 
and the ravings, hallucinations, dizziness, fainting begin. Water is a conductor of light, information, electricity. For this very reason, the spirit and consciousness move through the water, and it knows reality through it. The spirit manifested is water in constant adaptation, and this electricity is what generates pulses and impulses that give rise to movement, acting from a voltage that is ex motio, me, emotion, I am. The planet Neptune was named in its discovery in the 19th century, following the tradition of calling the planets after gods that walk the heavens. Its constitution is mostly gases, and its size similar to Uranus. It is about four hours at the speed of light from Earth, and is the eighth planet from the Sun, forming part of the four gaseous giants, being in the confines of the solar system, which makes it one of the two most subtle and deep planets of those imperceptible that affect the innermost aspects of being, the intangible and invisible. It is one of those that you need to close your eyes to perceive, and that maybe you are a life trying to find in yourself. For its pressure is imperceptible, and yet it is what drags the external gravity of all the other planets inside the system, and in its movement generates the waves of the subconscious. Me. It's like the fish that is in the water and will never be able to see the ocean. Not knowing the presence of the ocean because you are used to moving in an environment does not mean that it does not exist or affect. In the same way that for someone born on Earth, air seems non-existent, a vacuum, and for an alien born on Mars, the air on Earth would mean a horrible crushing death. I am. The habit of moving in an environment makes you hardly perceive it. That is the subconscious, the depth of this ocean that you do not see that you do not feel, of the waters that you do not perceive, controlled by Neptune. While the moon will move the waters of your life day by day, conditioning what you do and feel, being the waves that you can contemplate and recognize in their movements, Neptune will be the depths of this ocean, where you cannot notice the currents, the waves, the movements, or the lights. Everything is deep down, and therefore you must close your eyes. Me. I close my eyes. I hold the pressure coming from all sides. My eyes get wet. Well, see you. I see what is inside me. I am. And that's what most people are afraid to face, because going deep takes attention away from the external, leaves us vulnerable to predators. That is why most people deny seeing themselves, closing their eyes and daring to swim in the deep waters of the subconscious, because their reality is abstract, it is unreal. That is where you only find sensations, emotions, and none is related to the daytime world, for they are a mixture of all things, of all times and spaces. Me. It's scary to dive there. I am. Because you will see what you have denied. You enter such a broad consciousness that you lose track of who you are, to be everything. The memory of all that you were, are, and will be, connected to all that exists. You are a fish that, by looking inward and feeling the water around it, allows itself to recognize itself as the ocean itself, with all the creatures that inhabit it. By recognizing your inner world, you realize how small and even insignificant your life is, in that everything you have done is but a simple point in infinity. Me. Facing Neptune is a great existential crisis. I am. To accept him in you is to recognize you as a spiritual being. Whoever seeks the expansion of his being must integrate Neptune into his life. Meditation, conscious sleep, Ceremonies with sacred plants, hallucinogenic drugs, temescals, everything that leads you to a deep experience of abstraction from reality, that opens your inner world, allowing you to feel everything that was in you and you denied or did not know, opens, feels, lives. Me. It's jumping into the sea head first, not knowing what's underneath. I am. That's why it terrifies those who don't dare to swim, those who are afraid of water.
but only then can you come to feel the most real of existence. Close your eyes, me. I see myself, floating in a sea of ideas and emotions. I perceive emotions that I thought forgotten or already worked. Why are they still there if I already faced them? Why tears flow from my eyes if I have already felt them and released them? I am. Just because you've read a book doesn't make history go away. Just because you watch a movie once doesn't mean that knowing the ending doesn't feel the same emotions when you watch it again. Only one thing will change when you cry again for what lives in you. Consciousness. Knowing why, you can allow yourself to feel the emotion like someone rereading the pages of an old book. By doing so, you will understand things that you have not seen before. But by knowing him and knowing him, they do not disappear from the ocean but begin to be part of it. Me. I let my tears fall because I am. And drink them, this time with awareness. This is your Neptunian task. Sit down, close your eyes, and remember. Think about that deepest part of your soul, the pains, anxieties, or joys and pleasures you long for. Make them resurface. Feel how the emotion translates into your senses, your touch, smell, taste, hearing, the colors you perceive inside, and let your inner sea manifest. Let Neptune emerge from you. Let the waves of the subconscious bathe the shores of your world. Let the tears fall withheld, silenced. Let your eyes get wet, releasing the force of the tides as never before. Not because of melancholy, but because of the awareness of manifesting the gravity of a world within you. And when the waters return, when they fall down your cheeks, drink them knowing that you integrate into you the living force of that whole world. Me. Every tear is a book. Drinking them is like reading them. To close my eyes is not to ignore the world. It is to become the whole world. I am. Close your eyes, and when your memory moistens them, you'll be ready to daydream. Oh, oh.